The video that you're about to see is an objective view of FE Core. Please note that nothing of what I'm about to discuss is an opinion, but rather public fact. Many already know the conclusion that FE Core is a flat earth organization which by motivation and mantra is intent on swaying public opinion and convincing the public that government organizations are lying to them and nearly every aspect of modern and historical science has in some way attempted to control the populace with lies. FE Core facilitates this by having an all flat earther staff performing only experiments to attempt to substantiate flat earth claims while producing only opinion-based results by ignoring all natural facts as the results. FECore.org has also been party to promoting the Flat Earth Conferences and has even held at least one panel during these conferences. All of this is the very definition of propaganda. The drive of FE Core is to promote and distribute propaganda against established institutions such as the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, and the United States Geological Survey, or USGS, as well as education in general regarding astronomy, mathematics, earth sciences, and history. Such activity is in direct violation of Article 2, Item C of the Articles of Incorporation document stating, No substantial part of the activities of the corporation shall be carrying on propaganda. FE Corps filed this on 7 December 2017. FE Corps' activities could also be seen as a violation of that same item as it continues to forbid attempts to influence legislation which aiming to discredit and or dismember or affect the Congress regulated funding of government agencies such as but not limited to NASA, the NOAA, and the USGS is an attempt to do that very thing. Their experiments are designed to allow their opinion to be the conclusion and despite their attempts to silence, defame, and even slander their objective critics, all of their results have been quite well identified as fraudulent in painstaking detail. During my discussion with the FE Corps president and flat earther Mike Cavanaugh, he held me responsible for the researched conclusions which folks have shared about FE Corps on my channel during live hangouts. Yet he refused to hold board members of FE Corps responsible when speaking as a representative of FE Corps or as a pundit for flat earth claims, which FE Corps was founded to substantiate. In no way will I nor can I be held responsible for the opinions of others shared on my channel, which is transparent fact. However, those speaking in the name of FE Core, as members of the board or otherwise, are responsible for their statements about the company's activities and goals when stating so. First, let me start off by saying, in the state of Indiana, yes, FE Core is a registered nonprofit, but that's about all you can get out of a general surface level online search. Achieving this status is nothing more than documents and fees were sent and accepted by the state of Indiana. This is by far not an acknowledgement of the legitimacy to FE Core's goals and principles nor their adherence to the rules and guidelines of a nonprofit organization. This is a name and registration purchase of no particular depth. I wanted to do my own research further in FE Core with Mike's assistance so that I could possibly correct anyone on my channel should they try and convince me of something untrue. But Mike refused to send me a copy of the PDF document packet which he displayed live during our discussion. This PDF package is a point of contention in that discussion and this would have helped my research. Mike refused stating I am not going to give you that. It has information in it solely intended for the IRS. However, IRS Form 990 and the 1023, which are required by the IRS to be made publicly available with, without, or even awaiting 501c3 status, have not been made available to me or the public. An online search for any 990 submitted by FE Corps, which should have been annually, yielded zero results. So this forced me to do my own research, given that which is publicly available about the conception and stated goals of FE Core. <laughs> a 
As simple as it may seem, the FE Core logo is a declaration of Flat Earth in itself. FE, which is a commonly accepted acronym for Flat Earth or Flat Earther, Core is spelled as C-O-R-E, meaning the center of an object or a group. It can also mean the central belief of an individual or group. The name is often stated as Field Engineers Core. However, that spelling in that case would be C-O-R-P-S, with such examples as the Corps of Engineers and the Marine Corps. The symbol used in the FE Corps logo, aside from having nothing to do with field engineering, is actually a geometric illustration which was introduced by Steve Torrance, co-founder of FE Corps, board member of FE Corps, and Flat Earther. This design was of Steve Torrance's Magnetic Flat Earth, a 3D model that he used in that claim. A further illustration of this form is shown on the FE Corps Facebook page alongside one of the designs that was used in Steve Torrance's video. So alone, the name and logo display clearly that FE Corps is a Flat Earth organization, supporting the Flat Earth cause and identifying itself as the core proponents with the intent to accept donations without tax obligations. And if successfully achieving 501c3 status, this means that your tax dollars will be funding them by way of exemption. But of course, if this was just a thing about the logo, there would be no need in making this video. So let's examine the conception of FE Corps and the individuals involved. Starting with the FE Corps president, Mike Cavanaugh himself. Listen for a moment to Mike explain his motivation and conception of FE Corps. So could you take a couple of minutes to just time it, kind of tell us how did you figure this whole thing out that, you know, we don't live on a spinning orbiting space fair? Um, well, it, uh, it happened uh, for me. Uh, it, it took quite a while for me to accept it. Um, I had uh, a friend here in the Netherlands who was uh, investigating the, the flat earth. And uh, I, f I thought he was ridiculous, of course, like uh, most people do. It, I, was, I was watching um, uh, Rob Skiba do a, do a breakdown of the Apollo program on YouTube, you know, and I, I got so extremely pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I I almost threw my shoe at the television, you know. <laughs> but uh, you know that that was that was basically the moment that that you know that I I got so mad with myself, you know that that I started that you know why did I believe that horse shit? <laughs> now guys like uh, my my dad, for example, you know he's a hardcore NASA believer, still is. You know, even with his son being the president of a flat earth organization. But <laughs> you know, you're, you're saying, OK, you know, this is, you know, we've been lied to and, and that sort of thing. How, how long, mm -hmm. how much time between there and when you decided that you were going to, you know, start and, and kind of found this, this organization, FE Corps? Well, um, I, um, as soon as I started accepting, um, uh, that it was uh, a, a very, very uh, great possibility. Then I started l looking up um, prominent figures in, in Flat Earth, their, at least their videos, and, and watch uh, their materials, you know. And I'm, I, uh, I, I, I landed on Dr. Zach's page, and I saw his um, video about the laser test that, that they did, or were planning at that stage. And I also saw that Steve Torrance was doing the animations for um, uh, for mo most of the video. And then I went over to Steve's channel and I saw that Steve was making 3D animations of um, uh, the AE uh, model uh, with JPL Horizons uh, uh, data, you know, the, all the stars and all the planets and all the suns and uh, or all the sun and the moon all the positions on the map were based on actual data and that was actually something that I was looking for so I got in contact with Steve and Zach and we started um, you know uh, modeling uh, and investigating and uh, etc cetera, etc cetera, doing some experiments and that was just the three of us you know and, and we were uh, discussing many times that uh, it, 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 it was a good idea to expand the group and maybe um, 
um, uh, do something together, you know, that it was still uh, no real plans to start an official organization, but just getting some heads together and trying to crack uh, the the tough nuts in in the in this um, dilemma of the flat earth, so to speak. And um, well, that 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 started to grow pretty fast. We um, we uh, opened a Facebook uh, chat group uh, for it and um, uh, got in contact with uh, uh, Dave Marsh, for example, and uh, other guys in Flat Earth, Rick Hummer. And um, uh, then on one day, Zach said to me, uh, maybe it's a good idea to make something official. And, you know, that got me thinking and, uh, you know, what are our possibilities and would it be a good idea and how do we... Um, how do we uh, create such an organization? What are, what would be our goal? Um, and what um, um, stumble blocks do we need to watch out for? And um, well, that's the the rest is history, I guess, because uh, I think in October of last year we decided to do it, and we got um, uh, Bob and Jaron and me. Sandor, Steve, and and Rick together, and uh, we started Efficore. Oh, that's awesome, man! And that, that was the big announcement, announcement at the conference, conference obviously, in, in Raleigh, North Carolina. Was was uh, you know this group has formed and any kind of the purpose of it, and you know what was on the horizon and some of the experiments that were going to be conducted and the funding. So clearly, Efficore was conceived by a flat earther who was convinced to be a flat earther by a video poorly attempting to discredit NASA with an opinion and scripture based narrative. Mike Cavanaugh with Zach went on to recruit other flat earthers for the organization which now became FE Core. For those who have often stated to me, what is the harm in somebody believing in flat earth, this organization was founded because one person failed to do the research on the claims suggested in a video by another flat earther. Now listen to FE Core board member and avid flat earther from the Globusters Flat Earth YouTube group, Bob Nodell, as he goes into detail of the goals of FE Core during one of the Flat Earth conferences. There you have it. Okay, so that's pretty much for this presentation. So what's on the horizon? I said I would, I would mention a little bit more about the um, Field Engineers Core group that we, has just recently been formed, and we are going to be doing lots of experiments with uh, very high-end DOD specified ring laser gyros, mechanical gyroscopes, laser interferometers, uh, MEMS accelerometers, <laughs> all of these will be used to prove that there not only is there no curvature to the earth, there is no forward motion to the earth, as well as uh, the absolute existence of the ether that Einstein eliminated with his special theory of relativity. We will experimentally show that the ether is rotating around this plane at about 15 degrees per hour, and that's about the only thing that's moving because these, this is the dielectric energy that's coming from the, scar, the stars and the sky above us. This was actually measured over 100 years ago by Sanyak, and uh, many experiments were done uh, back then that we are going to be redoing in the uh, Field Engineer Core Group. Uh, we'll be redoing the Sanyaks experiments, the Michelson-Morley, Michelson-Gale, Aries failure, and we will be carrying them out with our state-of-the-art 21st century computerized laser precision test equipment through the Field Engineers Core Group. And we will be bringing out new inventions uh, that they're being developed to be used as tools to model what we have learned and speculate our cosmology to be. Before we go any further on this subject, let us listen to Mike Cavanaugh read off the carefully crafted yet somewhat canned FE Core mission statement. Our mission is not to prove that the government is a fraud 
or to have any government organization shut down, nor do we have any intention on lobbying to change litigate, le legislation. We have not committed fraud of any kind. There is no proof of fraud being committed. This is a defamatory statement. EFICOR is an organization of individuals dedicated to accuracy, discovery, and application in scientific research. EFICOR is unique among researchers groups because we are independent of outside control. As individuals performing research, we realize by forming this group and inviting you to participate, we can greatly expand the scientific body of knowledge. We believe there are many discoveries to be made which have an enormous potential to benefit everyone on Earth. FECOR is doing experiments to collect unbiased data to submit for the public for review and discussion. We do not we do not and have not participated in spreading of any propaganda. We are strictly a data-driven organization. The mission statement, which you just heard, is a wide departure from their conception and goals, yet claims to be all about the science. Their entire board and staff consists only of flat earthers seeking to prove only their flat earth claims. FE Core boasts to be of field engineers. As stated, a collective operation of field engineers researching Earth. However, none of whom are engineers in the fields being displayed or tested. FE Core board member and avid Flat Earther from the Globebusters Flat Earth YouTube group Bob Nodell highlighted the lack of engineer qualifications of the FE Core members with this non concise dismissal of the term engineer during the FE Core online board of directors statement. What licensed engineers does FE Core have on staff to be able to use that name worth addressing? Okay, great. Um, yeah, we can address that. Um, no, the word engineer is not regulated. Um, an engineer, um, you know, if you're, you're speaking in terms of uh, engineers have to have specific degrees or anything like that, um, that's probably what most people accept. And yes, uh, uh, we have many degreed engineers on staff, but um, there are many forms of engineering. And so the use of the word engineer is not uh, something that is re regulated. Uh, or if you're in the case of uh, George, um, he thinks that uh, everybody has to be a member of the Professional Engineer Society to be able to be considered an engineer. Nothing could be further from the truth. Um, and in fact, you don't even have to have a degree to be an engineer. Um, engineers, you know, you could run a train and be called engineers. So. Uh, the, the short answer to your question is absolutely not, but believe me when I tell you that uh, everybody on this board uh, and most of the people in FE Core are credentialed engineers and have every right to use that term, okay? Mike Cavanaugh is the president of FE Core, and yet passively assumes no responsibility for the published results of tests, which is the actual function of FE Core. Okay, now, there are two photographs inside of the, the, the document that you guys released. Um, and those two photographs, there's two photographs of some kind of laser hitting a large grid target, you know, like a sail. Um, is that the results of those two tests? No, no that's just to showcase. Because uh, those were we, shorter range, right? No, there was, yeah, there was sort of pretty close by, us, I think, 20 meters or something. Okay, now... Did why did you not release photographs of the of the actual laser at this 20, 20 something kilometer uh, uh, distance? Why did you not release photographs in those in that results document? Well, not then. There's a perfectly reasonable explanation for that. And you know, the the, the night we went out to to get those um, measurements, or when we got those measurements, was actually not intended to actually be an actual measurement. I was just going out there to test if the GPS system was actually targeting the laser in the right uh, uh, direction. So and we did went out with, with my phone and the P900 and we were managed, we managed to, you know, to get some on camera and some, we, we took some pictures. Okay. But fortunately for that night, because it was a perfect night, we, you know, we should have brought um, more massive camera gear. Definitely. Okay. So it's safe to say that Although you, you state that there was a target that was hit uh, and which would have basically confirmed all of your work, um, you don't have photographs of it. 
Uh, we do have video and photographs of it, but you know they're they're made with a P900, and the P900 is not the best camera that you uh, that you can have at uh, those locations. Okay, are these are these photos and videos, regardless of quality, uh, ever going to be released? Yes, yes, we're um, you know, there's a, a massive dump of um, media that uh, that we're going to release pretty soon. I hope we're waiting for a special occasion, and uh, one of those. No responsible for the content of the website, which is the public face of FE Core. The only thing that we've changed on our website is, and we were made aware of that by another 501c3, is that we, we mentioned on our website that we're already registered as a 501c3, and that was obviously not true. That was a mistake made by the web editor, and that was corrected into that we're in the process of becoming a 501c3. Okay. No responsibility for blocking of visitors and viewers of FE Core material on the FE Core YouTube channel. I, I, I don't have any control, or at least I do have control of the channel, but I, I don't know who is muted. I actually don't know how to mute people, but uh, apart from that, um, you know, the, the, the board of directors meeting, um, which is you know, maybe something that, that we can address also. Uh, and has no control of how his representatives discuss FE Core's goals. Well, <clears throat> should I should I hold you personally responsible for everything that is said by uh, members of FE Core? Um, if it comes through the FE Core channel, then yes, then I am the end responsible person. Interesting. Okay. So uh, so quotes that were made by let's say Bob Nodell at the FE conference which were not posted on the FE core thing even though they were sitting up there representing FE core are you saying that those are not admissible um, if as I said if they're not coming through the FE core channels then they're, they're personal opinions by board directors e even if he's sitting there representing FE core personally um, I'm not sure in which capacity he can represent FE core at an Flattered convention, you know. Um, I could actually probably bring it up for you. I can bring you up the quote too, but uh, where was it? Where was it? Uh, I don't remember exactly which conference it was at. Hold on a second. Uh, I, I think it's the 2017 in rally where we announced that we were going to form FE Core. Right. So, would you consider that speaking in the capacity of FE Core? No. No. Because we're not officially a business then there yet. We only announced our formation. Interesting. Okay. Would uh, would you consider uh, quotes from people of FE Core during uh, testing performed by FE Core as admissible? Um, and I think you mean with admissible that uh, I'm not responsible for it. But if they're done during our tests, then yeah, sure. You know we're responsible for anything that uh, that happens during those tests okay now as i understand it fe core uh has stated numerous times that they are not a flat earth organization nor are they trying to prove flat earth am i correct correct then why was it that bob said during your lake balaton tests bob specifically said flat earth confirmed well that's his opinion that's his belief but, but is you know, he not is he not speaking in the capacity of fe core no, no, he's, he's speaking his opinion as a director. He's not representing... Okay, you. when is his opinion to be considered something well, that is spoken for FE Core? There's a difference between the, the individual and the body corporate. You know, the, the corporate body, FE Core, needs to um, um, you know, put out these statement, statements to its own channels to make it bound to FE Core. The personal opinions of board directors are irrelevant to the opinion of the corporation. Excellent. Okay, so nothing that Bob says can be held as FE Core unless he says it actually uh, in some capacity uh, on the website of FE Core. Is that what you're saying? Correct, yes. Okay, now, either this means that Mike Cavanaugh is an incompetent president of an organization and has loose cannon board members running around falsely stating the goals and achievements of FE Core as being specifically flat earth in nature and yet somehow still remains to be a board member 
or this is a clear sign that this is not a corporation where anybody is truly in control nor is concerned with providing factual, reviewed, or solid information, which leads one to believe that there are other motives to consider. First of all, let me let me let you know that the entire board of directors is here for Field Engineer Corps. Um, we have Steve Torrance, we have Sandor Zelski, and, and we have uh, Karen B, uh, Karen Endicott with us. We have Mike Cavanaugh. We have Jaron Campanella, we have Rick Hummer, and of course myself, which comprises the seven members of the uh, board of directors for FE Corps. The individual works of the Flat Earther staff of FE Corps quite clearly defines that the works of FE Corps are governed by those claiming Flat Earth and other anti-establishment views. All of the board members, at one time or another, have been clearly shown their claims are wrong, disingenuous, and in some cases, blatantly fraudulent. But those explanations are cleanly removed and the submitters blocked and dismissed as trolls, paid shills, and liars, clearly displaying a lack of interest by the FE Corps staff in factual results, honest experimentation, or even fact-based opinions and professional advice. <laughs>
However, nowhere on the site or results documentation was that either performed, set up, or given the location of the distant teams, even physically possible to carry out, as he described. And yet another additional intent, which was only brought up in my discussion with Mike, but was never mentioned in the results documentation, on the website, or even in post-event interviews with his fellow Flat Earthers, was the apparent illumination of targets at the distant end of 20 plus kilometer tests, which Mike states he got very accurate results on, made photographs of, but again, never mentions them or has ever produced a photo of this occurrence. But what was the ultimate goal of the test? Was it to see the laser at the other end or was it to hit a target? To hit a target. And did you hit a target? Yes. At 22 kilometers? At 20 and 27, if I remember correctly, it's 27 or 29. Now, the there are two target photos in the results document, but those, as confirmed by Mike Cavanaugh, are of small short-range tests and are of no real value from either location. And the critique that I offered about the methodology of leveling the laser, which Mike specifically states multiple times was irrelevant at the emitter location, displays at a minimum the incompetence of those performing these tests. This experiment, also intent on claiming the Earth to have a flat surface, was a test using surveying equipment. However, the test was a general failure which sometimes happens, because it proved neither a curved or a flat earth, but rather offered a concave result, which brought discussion from actual surveyors who stated that either the equipment wasn't calibrated correctly or the calculations afterwards were performed improperly. While quite impressive in design and construction, the gyroscope developed by FE Core is by far not capable of cleanly detecting that which they wish to detect with it. And in that, will be easy to claim that the Earth doesn't rotate because the detection from the gyroscope will be negative. Additionally, the mechanical gyroscope built by FE Core claims to discredit the Foucault gyroscope from the 1800s, which is reported to have detected the Earth's rotation by measuring the precession on its two axes. However, FE Core made the decision not to reproduce the Foucault gyro and instead built a far less sensitive one. The first of the experiments that has yet to be performed is another attempt to claim the Earth's surface to be flat by first dismissing natural phenomena and making unsubstantiated claims regarding radio transmission. In an interview with FE Corps president and flat earther Mike Cavanaugh, he stated that refraction has no effect on radio waves. Light curves with the earth, you know, and that's ridiculous. Um, or refracts with the, with, uh, with, uh, uh, along the curve, so to speak, like, like what metabunk.org uh, suggests. Um, but now they're going to have a hard time because we're going to add uh, some, some extra validation to this laser experiment by doing the same distance, but now with microwave transmissions point to point from the same elevation heights as, um, as we did with laser observations. And a microwave doesn't refract. A microwave is point to point communication. And if we, were, if we are able and we are going to be able to establish a communication over that 40 kilometers distance, then we will have not only a point-to-point -point communication over an impossible distance over a curve, but also validated our, our laser experiments. Now that it's not bending around any curved surface or whatever, because a microwave doesn't do that. A microwave is a straight line from point A to point B. You know, there's no way around it. You can say that a light beam might refract around a curve, but microwaves don't do that. They are not susceptible to refraction. Uh, I know that there are the, the if if you get a constant transmission, you know, a solid transmission, then you know there's no way you can make the excuse that it's a Fresnel zone or or whatever or a reflection. That's just point-to-point -point communication because microwave is two-way communication. You know, right. you, you're sending and receiving at the same time. 
which is categorically false, as radio waves, similar to light, are forms of radiation. So that which can affect light can also affect radio waves. Mike Cavanaugh even acknowledges this during my discussion with him as he acknowledges the function of tropospheric refraction radio connections. Are you, are you familiar with uh, tropo radio? No. Okay, well, it's tropos tropospheric uh, 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 scattering where basically a radio shot is shot upwards and it bounces off the, well, not straight up, of course, but at a specific angle and it bounces yeah, off the troposphere. I've heard, I've heard the face uh, tropospheric scattering, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's, it's a, uh, what do you call it? It's a, it's a great technique for uh, very long uh, radio things, uh, radio shots. Not to mention, anyone who performs a quick Google search can find plenty of articles and charts and test data to confirm that radio waves are definitely subject to atmospheric distortion and refraction. And if anything is true, radio waves at certain frequencies can penetrate obstructions which life can't pass through. Which is why you can shut your doors and windows, but your boombox will still play your favorite radio station, your mobile phone will still be able to make calls, and your computer will still have a data connection with your Wi-Fi router elsewhere in your house. And lastly, there is to be a reproduction of the test known as Aries failure, which on the surface is a visual test, but ultimately it is a heavily mathematical test, which FE cores depending more on the viewers accepting FE cores statements about the results rather than checking or even having the ability to check up on it themselves. Something that should also be mentioned is the Aries failure test is called a failure because of its inconclusive results for that which was tested. The intent of this video is not to halt experimentation by flat earthers, as we have all become callous to the dishonesty of or misrepresentation of their results. The intent of this video is to clearly identify that FE Core is 100% a flat earther organization with an anti-establishment agenda intent on the spread of propaganda against the common good and progress of mankind. I personally, through proper channels, will be submitting a form 13909 tax exemption organization complaint form to eoclass at irs.gov, outlining the fact that the nonprofit organization FE Core is operating in violation of the Articles of Incorporation, Section 2, Item C for propaganda, and will be researching the proper complaint methods to ensure that they do not get 501c3 status, that it is known that this was done intentionally by Mike Cavanaugh and the other members of FE Core. Additionally, I am formally requesting a digital copy of FE Core's annual required form 990 and 1023. This is my right as a citizen of the United States to receive that information. Please also understand that this is a requirement regardless of whether or not the organization has 501 anything status. The FE Core organization is required to comply with this request as they have not made the documents publicly available on their website or FE Core publicly accessible outlets. The IRS does allow you to charge a copy fee of 20 cents per page, but that is only if I request a paper copy, which I do not require, and only when that processing fee is outlined prior to my request on your website, which it is not. There have been two tax deadlines since the conception of FE Core, April of 2018 and April of 2019 respectively. So there should be two editions of these documents. Please be aware that the IRS regulations state that they can impose a penalty of 20 US dollars per day up to a maximum of $10,000 as a fine for each day you refuse to provide this information after my request. These were the documents that I had requested from Mike Cavanaugh in the back chat and he openly refused to provide. I hope this video has been informative. Y'all have a nice day. Oh my God. I would like to offer an educated opinion regarding what FE Corps President Mike Cavanaugh stated and considered to be the act of trolls 
during the Lake Balaton laser experiments. It was stated that the police were called to the FE Corps crew while performing their laser tests. Mike Cavanaugh was certain that this was from those trying to stop the experimentation during the live stream. He very clearly described that FE Corps thwarted the police problems with permits for the test. While I do not support feeble attempts to disturb experimentation, it is a bit arrogant to claim that this was purely the act of trolls watching the live stream. First, because of the fact that when it was actually live, the live stream was only viewed by those who were invited to view it. Second, there was very little public information about the actual addresses being used. And third, it is highly doubtful that among the folks who were watching, that anybody spoke the language, knew the phone number of, or could even possibly submit such a police complaint. Mike Cavanaugh and the FE Corps crew seem to be ignorant of the fact that having a permit for something does not mean that the surrounding community is informed or cool with the activity. The entire Lake Balaton is bordered with residences and businesses, and it would be ignorant at best to think of the hundreds of meters of coastline which FE Corps blasted with the laser that night that none of the residents of the homes in that area made formal complaints to the police. And by the way, I also know why at Lake Balaton, the green laser team saw the blue laser, but the blue laser team didn't see the green. Feel free to contact me if you'd like to know why that was. It has to do with page 13 of your results document.